my side with your loved one you'll find an enchantment here the night will weave its magic spell i stand by this statement i believe this is the most romantic scene in animation history the movie that made me fall in love with animation when i was a kid was none other than the lady and the tramp this review is going to be extremely different from my other reviews because normally i try to persuade people into like watching a movie for themselves or like not watching a movie trying to like push them away for the most part but here it's it's hard to do that i love this movie with all my heart and i'm going to gush non-stop just over this movie but this movie fits a specific type of niche if you didn't grow up with this movie you're just not gonna like it like i will the lady and the tramp is a romance movie through and through and if you don't like romance movies you're not gonna like this at all it's not even one of the best romances like it, it, it is a romance through and through, but it doesn't have strong highlights for the most part. It does, however, respect its identity and is a foundation for some of the most iconic romance scenes. Like the spaghetti scene, if you see any spaghetti scene in a romance movie, it's because of this movie, Lady and the Tramp. I adore very good romance stories, and to me, this is a very good romance story. Romance stories and musicals are like what I grew up with and the foundation of who I am. I just, I love them so much. It's something I never ever want to push away. When done well, I personally think they are some of the most impactful and emotional moments of all media. Romances are just so powerful, nobody really understands them. And it is why I am just so happy and so very excited to talk about The Lady and the Tramp to my audience. God, I, I I love this movie a lot. I have a lot of Lady in the Tramp merch, which if you watch my videos, you'll see it's over there. I also got a vinyl, a vinyl record of all the soundtrack of Lady in the Tramp, which I love. I know, I know it's cringe, but I don't give a fuck. I love it. <laughs> Why did I put this on my table? There's actually just no reason to put this on my table. I just wasted a lot of time. We're gonna edit that. I will, however, showcase the vinyl, okay? This vinyl in perfect condition i think it's beautiful and i'm so happy i got it it cost 70 dollars dude my friend saw this at an antique store and i just immediately broke and i said here here's 70 dollars <laughs> now going back to it and speaking on the animation the animation on this is absolutely adorable it's very beautiful there is some sections to where like the quality isn't fully there or it's not up to par with the rest of the movie but for the most part, it's like these hand-drawn animated um, animations, and it's just beautiful. This movie relies on a lot of still imagery and backgrounds, and the backgrounds in this movie are just so immaculate. It makes you feel like you're really in this environment, that it's a real environment. There is some shots to where the background is moving and the characters are trying their hardest to like move along with the background but not not everything's perfect here i'll be honest what does feel perfect in this movie though is the animation of the animals the dogs in this movie feel so realistic and so alive it's immaculate at the start of the movie there's a quote they put in that in my opinion really encapsulates what they were going for with this movie they were going for like respecting animals respecting dogs and just how much love and care they had for animals and it reads as follows and the whole history of the world there is one thing that money cannot buy the wag of a dog's tail to me i don't know why else put that quote in i've never seen i haven't seen too many past disney movies i've seen a couple but like why would you put that quote in unless you were like really respecting dogs and animals it, it seems to me like they cared about what they were making it even follows up after that and says so it is to all dogs be they ladies or tramps that this picture is respectfully dedicated like i i really think they cared about this movie now going into the music of this movie the music is absolutely spectacular and this is 
this movie's not really a musical for the most part. There is there is like music and they are singing. It progresses the story, but like it's way too few and far in between. Like it, it like it's like small little sections. The songs in this movie are never a focus. Therefore, I don't think it's really a musical or you can call it that. But this music in this movie is just beautiful. It's immaculate and it has a lot of musical themes. Peggy Lee wrote and sang majority of the songs you hear in the movie like He's a Tramp, um La La Lu and the Siamese cat song. He was also aided by someone who did majority of the score as well, Sony Burke. Bella Notte was performed by a person named George Givett. And I know those names probably mean nothing to the normal person, but I think I should give them some credit. Now, before continuing with this review, I think it'd be a disservice to not talk about the racism in this movie. There is quite a bit of racism and stereotypes in this movie. It was from the 50s. We are Siamese, if you please. Even Trump has his Achilles heel. Pardon me, amigo. What is this chilly heel? You take a Tony's advice and settle down with this one, eh? <laughs> this one? This one. This one. Oh, Tony, you know. <laughs> He's not a speaky English are pretty good. <laughs> Apes? No, no. No use even asking them. They wouldn't understand. They wouldn't? Uh-uh. Too closely related to humans. This last one isn't really racist per se, but there's something, I don't know, something about the era that makes me think maybe this is in bad faith those parts of the movie are obviously very harmful and like inexcusable but i don't believe that consuming this product means you endorse that in any sense i'm a huge believer that for majority of things the consumer isn't really in the wrong it's the person who created it and or who endorses it and you can like something while not endorsing the bad parts about it or the harmful parts about it dog and pony follies he's a tramp but they love you breaks a new heart every day He's a tramp, they adore him, and I only hope they stay that way. He's a tramp, he's a scoundrel, he's a rover, fuck. <laughs> Alright, finally going into the story. This story is a romance story, and it is one of the most impactful, beautiful romance stories of the 50s in my opinion. This movie is about a very rich dog named Lady falling in love with a peasant basically named the Tramp who's a street dog. Lady is a very pampered, gorgeous, and well-mannered female dog who accidentally thinks she's being pushed out because her family is having a baby. The Tramp on the other hand is very streetwise and actually understands how to live without uh, needing a family or to be cared for. He kind of plays people for the most part. Both dogs are from very different worlds but I love how both are very intelligent in their own way from the way they were raised. Their personalities are their own and they never need each other. They're just going in the same direction which is what love is supposed to be. Even when Lady is lost and alone or she's chained up on the doghouse like she is her own person like she does need help from the tr tramp yes but like it's never to the point to where it's like codependency like I really enjoy that aspect of the movie so the same way for the tramp as well even though he's falling in love with this girl he never like fully needs it. it's not a codependent thing like he's like I love this girl but like I am my own person like at the end of the day if things don't work out I can live on my own. It's the sort of connection and understanding of romance and love in general that I feel a lot of other animated movies don't really understand or get too much. The story enhances their character by blossoming their love and then at the end betraying it in order to re-evaluate if it's worth it. The build up to one of the most iconic scenes, the spaghetti scene, is actually so natural and it doesn't feel forced in any sort of sense. Like they naturally 
come together as one in order to share love. There's a lot of conflict and nuances they have in their relationship and it starts off as like they like each other instead of just like love each other right off the bat. And when Trap gets called out for basically being a whore for the most part by Lady, Lady pushes Tramp away but she's still in love. I I really I really like this detail. Who is Trixie? Trixie? And Lulu and Fifi and Rosita Chiquita well, well, whatever her name is. Chiquita Chiquita oh, oh yes well I, I can As explain. far as I'm concerned you needn't worry about your old heel. My, my, my heel? I don't need you to shelter and protect me. Yes but 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 If but, you grow but, but, careless don't blame me and I don't care if the Cossacks do pick you up. Goodbye. And take this with you. <laughs> now speaking on a little bit of the comedy in this movie the comedy is not the greatest but there is some there's some parts you can laugh at guaranteed not to wear tear rip or ravel turn around sister and show the customer the merchandise butcher he says that he wants a two spaghetti a speciale heavy on the mitzi ball Tony, dogs are done to talk. He's a talker to me. Okay, he's a talker to you. For the most part, the comedy isn't really going to keep you intrigued into this movie. It's mainly just full romance. Another weaker aspect of the movie, which I'm kind of 50-50 on, is the rat. The rat in this movie is like, they become a threat at the very end of the movie, but they they don't really build up into the rat coming back for the most part he's seen at the very beginning of the movie so he is an established threat but he's just gone until the end of the movie very conveniently another fault for some people might be its lack of replay value this movie isn't really meant to be replayed all the time although i replayed it all the time as a kid it's really not meant to be replayed all the time it's one of those movies to where like you watch it once every three four however many months and that's how you enjoy it that is another reason why they shouldn't have done a live action remake of this movie like yes i get it they're dogs like you can easily kind of transfer that into live action but you're missing the personality and the emotions that these dogs have to each other you're missing the whole connection the whole point of the movie like narratively you can kind of get away with live action uh cgi dogs being attracted to each other but the lack of animation really just dissolves any real emotion or attachment we have to these characters with all this being said I'm personally gonna give Lady and the Tramp my favorite movie of all time a five. I love this movie to death and I personally think it's a good movie but it's one of those movies that aren't for everyone and I can't really recommend it to every single person. I love, I would love for more people to see it but it, <sighs> It is just one of those movies. The racism especially makes it very hard for newcomers to sort of get attached to this movie if they haven't grown up on it and I, I don't fault them at all. I will however end the review and say this movie will be iconic forever. It is so meaningful to me and to a lot of people who understand what this really means to me and you know everybody else. How's it going pups? It's a canine. And I'm 